So welcome to the session in which you want to revise the employee resourcing paper that was done in June 2018. Employee resourcing, uh, the paper has two, two sections, section A, which has question one, and this section is compulsory. Then the paper has section B. Section B has uh, five questions from question two, three, four, five, and six. And for this section, you are supposed to do three questions. Three questions in uh, section one, or rather in section B, and one question in section A. Section B will get you 60 marks, and section A will get you 40 marks. You will find the section A normally, the paper is set. There is a case study question where you are supposed to read through a case, analyze it, understand what the case is about, and be better placed at attempting the questions as presented in the case. Now the case for this paper is uh, a case for Uwezo Research Institute. So who takes us through the case? Read the case, then we attempt answering the question in this section. Yes, somebody to start? We started late, so the earlier you guys uh, participate, the faster we'll be able to progress and finish. Anne, read. Enlarge, enlarge it, because I can see. Enlarge it. Yeah, I think it's. Yes, it's better now. Weather Research Institute. Weather Research Institute. Uh, 200 is too much. Fill right? the screen. Is that okay? Yes. Right, go on. Weather Research Institute. Weather Research Institute is one of the largest research institutions in Africa. It is an ungovernmental organization whose core mandate is to undertake research in agriculture and livestock. Although the organization has, been, has only been in existence for the last three years, its impact can be felt across the region. It came into existence as a result of a merger of four organizations whose mandate was to undertake research in agriculture and livestock. The organizations were Quick Research Organization, Songa Research Organization, PNL Research Organization, and Dawa Chris Research Organization. The NGO Coordination Board, which has in the past coordinated the activities of research organizations, advocated for the merger so as to build synergy to improve efficiency and effectiveness in the field of research. There was also a first need to compete with other international research institutions in government-owned research institutions. Following a successful merger, a caretaker committee was formed to oversee the transition to the newly formed organization. Specifically, this was to ensure that all the activities of the merger organization were harmonized and catered for in the revised structure. The members of the caretaker committee were competitively selected from a pool of potential candidates. In selecting the members, the board considered their technical expertise and commitment to duty. Mr. Nyota Njema, who is an expert in supply chain management, was appointed as a team leader. The committee's terms of reference were carefully spelled out by the board and the team's first assignment was to develop an integrated organizational structure. 
In designing the structure, it analyzed the various functions of the previous organization for purposes of ensuring fairness, objectivity, and seamless transition into the new organization. Unfortunately, the committee failed to involve key stakeholders in collecting information about their previous functions and jobs. It relied more on secondary sources of information and a job analysis exercise was not properly conducted. Unfortunately, it later emerged that some job descriptions had not been updated for the last three years. The committee proceeded to make radical changes, which caused panic among the employees. Among the changes that were made included redesigning of jobs, resulting in creating of new responsibilities, especially at managerial level. As a result, some senior managers lost their jobs, while others were reassigned responsibilities that could not match their skills and competencies. Some employees were transferred to different workstations and reassigned new responsibilities. The new organizational structure created by the committee provided for new positions which were filled from internal sources. In filling these positions, formal interviews were not conducted and appointments were made based on the curriculum vitae that had been previously submitted by the employees to the committee. The criteria used by the committee to make these changes was not communicated to the employees, who as a result viewed viewed the changes with suspicion, with suspicion. However, the committee defended its decision, again, that it was the only viable option, given the circumstances prevailing by then. It, was, it further went ahead to reason that there was, there was need to have on board people who understood the culture of the organization to drive the company's agenda. However, Mr. Tom Openda, who was a human resource and administration manager in one of the de defunct organizations argued that before creating new positions, there was a need to put in place a proper human resource plan meant to assist the management to ascertain its current and future human resource requirements. The interim chief executive of Pakistan, Mr. James Brown, also shared the same sentiments with Mr. Tom Openda, but unfortunately, no action was taken. As a result, the organization has over time experienced serious challenges, making it difficult to discharge its research mandate efficiently and effectively as envisaged by the board. In particular, the organization has experienced high labor turnover among its highly skilled and talented employees. And the most affected group has been the millennials. This state of affairs has resulted to poor service delivery. In the recent past, public out outcry has been witnessed and as a result, its image has greatly been dented. The media has continued to highlight negative publicity concerning the organization. This has become a major concern to the management as it has been blamed from different quarters. In its defense, the board has categorically argued that it has executed its mandate with due diligence, including appointment of a caretaker committee through a competitive process. The board has thus decided to take drastic measures in order to redeem the image of the organization. one of the interventions taken is to seek for expert opinion from rising human resource consultancy, consultancy firm. Among the issues that the consultancy firm is supposed to address include to establish whether job, job analysis was conducted professionally and in accordance with the relevant labor laws. To identify reasons for high labor turnover among the highly skilled and talented workers. To assess the viability of the new organization structure put in place by the caretaker committee. To establish the extent to which appointments were made based on merits. To establish the content of consultation among the committee members in making decisions. Then, now we go to the questions. The board is, in, is of the opinion that if the above issues were addressed, the organization will reclaim its lost growth. Explain.
Well, thank you for uh, reading for us the case study so that uh, we can begin to attempt the question. So it's a scenario of an organization, some restructuring and the board, the approach that the board has adopted. So the examiner is asking us, number one, explain the limitations of the method used by the committee to fill vacant positions. Which method was used by the committee? Which method was used by the committee? The faster you respond, the better, because I say today is your day. May I'll just be guiding the discussion and I expect the outcomes, the results, the points to come from you. Because by now, I, I believe you guys are gurus in this area. Which method is uh, recommended? You don't want to participate. I, 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 I go and rest. Fenton. Fenton? Benton, are you together? Hello. 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 Yes, Malim. I stepped out a bit. Oh, sorry. Which method was used by the board, the committee? We are asked. The board is of the opinion that if the above issues are addressed, the company will be able to reclaim its glory. So, number one, explain the limitations of the method used by the committee to fill vacant positions. Anybody? I'd like to attempt. Yes, please. Uh, uh, I think they were, from the case study, it appeared they were using uh, secondary sources of information uh, where they did not quite get the, the, the actual roles that employees were, were, were currently handling. So I think they based what they had maybe on employee records that were may not have been updated recently. Read for me my the last paragraph in the peg where I am. The last paragraph. Um, okay, the new organizational structure created by the committee provided for new positions, which were filled from internal sources. In filling these positions, formal interviews were not conducted and appointments were made based on the curriculum vitae that had previously been submitted by the employees to the committee. The criteria used by the committee to make these changes was not communicated to the employees, who as a result viewed the changes with suspicion. However, the committee defended the decision, arguing that this was the only viable option given the circumstances prevailing by then. It further went ahead to reason that there was need to have on board people who, who understood the culture of the organization to drive the company's agenda. Ah, yeah. Which approach is recommended by the board to fill vacant positions? Answer. Internal. Internal? Sources. Internal sourcing. Internal sources. Mm. So recruiting from within the organization is the approach recommended by the committee. So the examiner is asking us, explain the limitations of the method used by the committee to fill vacant positions. 
What are the limitations of the method? Um, I would attempt and say that uh, you would maintain if there are bad habits or bad cultures that the, these current employees have, uh, it would still go on because there's no, there's no new, uh, what would I call it, new input, new ideas from the external source as external sources would, would, would offer. So point number one, the no new ideas being fused into the organization from outside to the detriment of the organization. Point number two, if there are any bad habits, then these will be continuing since there is recruitment is just from within. There is no that break with the bad habits, bad culture in the organization. Anything else? Disadvantage, limitations of recruiting from internal sources. I want to attempt lack of innovation and creativity because, okay, they are used to the same kind of way of doing things. Yes. So as opposed to where you bring in uh, talent from outside that would be more creative and that will look at things differently. Limited innovation and creativity when you just use the same, same internal resources. Another limitation? Internal recruitment, what are the limitations? There is a likelihood of nepotism, probably where people have gotten used to one another or they're related or there's some kind of a bad habit in terms of uh, relationships. Likelihood of nepotism and favoritism in terms of who will get the jobs when you are recruiting from internal. Anything else? I would attempt and say that maybe if someone is promoted to a managerial a managerial position, they may not have the correct skill set possibly to handle that position, or they might find it hard to now uh, supervise people who they were working together with. I'm not sure how to phrase that, but yeah, I hope you get the idea. Allow me to answer as a front call. Sorry, I received some phone call that I had to attend to. Sorry, the, the, the last point that was raised just before I was interrupted. Kindly come up again. Uh, I was attempting and saying that uh, there could be, um, if someone is promoted to possibly a managerial position and they possibly might not have the proper skill sets for that post, so one, they could either not be able to supervise the employees that now will come under them. And two, they might find it difficult to now supervise the same employees, they were, the colleagues they were working with because now they're on a, on a hierarchical situation. They are higher than this now, uh, what they call it, subordinates. So you will find, thank you for that. You'll find when you adopt such a recruitment approach, in many instances, meritocracy is not the overriding criterion. There are other considerations and you end up with people promoted who are not necessarily the best to occupy those roles. So that is a challenge. 
when you are promoted from within, you will find somebody start, started in an organization as a girl. They went to school, did some diploma, some certificate, did their degree, and has been rising through the organization. Those who've been with you for long will look at you and they still see you as that tiger. So expecting that they'll respect you as now a manager becomes a challenge. That's why at times it's advisable if you find yourself in that such a situation that you started maybe when you are not very highly qualified and you've gone to school over time and now you have a degree, a master's, you might want to go to another organization where from the word go, they, you are looked at as an officer, as a manager. Not where some of us will still look at you and we see the, see the tiger, notwithstanding your papers. So disadvantages of recruiting from internal sources. You limit your uh, talent search area. You just restrict yourself to the few available internally. And also if poorly managed, then it will lead to demotivation of the workforce because we will feel those who get positions are not necessarily those who warrant. Question B. It is evident that job analysis was not professionally conducted. Examine how the company should have undertaken the exercise so as to achieve its goals. Job analysis has been done, but it was not professionally conducted. So as not to yield the desired results of a job analysis. So the examiner is asking, examine how the company should have undertaken the job analysis exercise so as to achieve its goals. Attempt. Anybody? I would say maybe they would have started off by uh, identifying what what uh, roles or uh, jobs were needed to be to be what do I say to be filled. So they would they would have to get some in information on that so that they can be able to know the needs the needs they have. Somebody else. You want to carry out the job analysis exercise in a manner that is deemed professional. The exercise was done in a professional manner. Somebody else. Uh, Molimo, let me try. There's a place I, it's like they didn't even review the job description to check on any updates. So it will be critical to analyze the various aspects, maybe in terms of the skills level, qualifications required to update with it, with the current trend or technology so that it meets the desired results. Need to review and update the job descriptions in line with updates and changes in technology, etc. But we are being asked that you did not undertake the exercise professionally. So examine how the company should have undertaken the exercise to, so as to achieve its intended goals. So to be able to carry out the job analysis exercise in a professional manner, what is it you are supposed to do? Number one, you need to set out clearly. What are the objectives? What is the reason why you want to carry out the job analysis exercise? So that there is clarity 
us to the need for the job analysis exercise, obtain support of uh, top management that they will avail the necessary resources that you will need to execute your job analysis exercise in the desired manner. Once you are clear as to why you need to do the job analysis, then you need to communicate to the interested and affected persons about the job analysis. Thereby, you need to be, be clear as to engage the union, engage the employees, engage their representatives as to why you want to embark on carrying out the job analysis exercise. Why will the exercise be important for the employees of the organization? Convince them as to why the exercise is to be undertaken. Step number two will also engage you coming in to plan so that you identify which are the jobs you want to focus on during the analysis exercise. Which is the approach or the methods you are going to use to collect the data that you need for purposes of job analysis. This come as part of the planning for the exercise. Then you communicate to all the affected stakeholders. Step number three, you now carry out, conduct the exercise once you have concurrence of all the involved and affected parties. Conduct the exercise where you apply whatever tools you will have agreed to use. Is it questionnaires? Is it uh, interview schedules? Is it uh, critical incidents? Is it supervisory conf conf uh, conference? Is it direct observation? Whichever method you will have agreed to employ, you apply the methods to collect data. The data that you will have collected, you will then co co compile it because you are collecting all pertinent data about every job position in the organization. Then step number four, you will now come to analyzing the data so as to come up with a summary of the job, the job description, and a profile of the candidate who is capable of performing these duties as outlined in the job description, in a job specification. That you need to be able to review this data with employees, review the job description with employees, with the managers, uh, get their recommendations, input, so as to come up with a document that holistically represents the job as per the views of the job holders or their managers. Once that is done, then you come up with your final and updated job description and job specification, which will be used depending on the job at hand. The exercise should not be a one-off exercise. Once it is done, periodic reviews of give or take five years are ideal. So because the jobs keep changing because of the changes in the job market. So periodic reviews would be of essence. So when you do that, you will carry out the job analysis in an, a professional manner as opposed to what these uh, 
committee did for the organization. The process of carrying out the job analysis exercise, well, I agree as to why the objectives plan accordingly, engage, communicate to the managers and employees who will be affected, agree on the tools that you'll be using to collect data, then carry out the job analysis exercise. And once the data is collected, analyze and review and uh, update until you come up with a full summarized job description and job specification, then you can update and use the information for the intended purpose. Question C. Fenton. The organization did not have a proper human resource plan in place, which contributed to the challenges that it it experienced. As a human resource manager, analyze the techniques that the organization could have adopted to focus, to focus demand for labor. You notice this is a very common question. In fact, the three papers that we've looked at, it recurs. The methods used to analyze, or rather to focus demand for job, for labor in organization. Which methods? Which methods have we looked at before? Mathematical models. Mathematical models that you can employ to give you projections. Regression analysis, for example. Two. Managerial forecasting. Managerial forecasting where you let the managers focus based on their experience and know-how. Another method? Delphi technique. Delphi technique is about what? Bringing in experts to rely on the expert know-how to give projections as to the HR situation in the company going forward. How many we will need based on the planned activities. Another method? Another method? Work study method. Then? Work study method. Work study method. What is that about? Work study is about analyzing and looking, studying the job so that you understand what the job is about. And you are able to begin determining what you need to be able to execute the job, to perform the job successfully. So work study methods can help us determine how many people we need based on the planned job activity. Ratio trend analysis, you can analyze ratios. Scenario analysis, you can employ scenario analysis. These are methods that we've looked at. Notice the three papers we've looked at all have this question. So it's probably a question that examiners like. Question D. Analyze the measures that the organization should adopt to improve labor productivity. Measures of improving labor productivity. Say so labor productivity is looking at the relationship between input output of labor. We invest so much, what is the output that comes out of the labor? Productivity of labor is critical. So what, is a, what are the methods of enhancing productivity of labor? We looked at this in topic one, under labor economics. 
Methods of enhancing labor productivity, anyone? Queen Rose? Here are the methods of enhancing labor productivity. Maureen? Maureen? Methods of enhancing labor productivity? Having a flexi time management. Mm -hmm. Expound. As in to make sure that employees are, are productive, you, you include the flexi hours and working schedule so that it improves on the work life balance. Help in reducing and managing stress, they are likely to be more productive. Marcy? Um, can you say invest in um, better equipment, machinery to improve on the efficiency and quality? Technology. Technology, yeah. Kind of machinery and equipment that you invest in. Automate your operation, computerize your operation so that you invest and use modern machinery and equipment in production processes. You'll likely be more productive. Don't about effective recruitment and selection so that you bring in the people with the right competence and skills and know-how to be able to produce, to meet your targets, enhance productivity. We talked about effective training and development, equipping them with the competence through training so as to be able to better perform to enhance labor production. Rewards and incentives that are provided. You use that to enhance labor productivity. The first example we gave was on managing stress. That if you manage the employee stress, then they will be more productive to the benefit of the organization. Proper leadership that give us direction, vision, important for us to be productive. Measures of enhancing labor productivity. So you will note that question one and two, maybe A and B were related to the case, but C and D are outside the case. Just application of knowledge that you have in employee resources. And you had your 40 marks. Point, well explained, you have your marks. I have not exhausted on the factors or method measures of enhancing labor productivity. I've just given five or so. The others, you have them, you can fill in that. Question two, Fenton. Question two. Yes. Perpetual speed. Speed Governors Company Limited intends to revise the terms and conditions of employment policy document to align it with the provisions of the labor laws. Illustrate the areas that may be covered by the revised document in accordance with the provisions of Employment Act 2007. Really? Perpetual Speed Governors Company Limited intends to revise the terms and conditions of employment policy documents to align it with the provisions of the labor laws. Illustrate the areas that may be covered by the revised document in accordance with the provisions of the Employment Act 2007. Terms and conditions of employment. So you want to revise the terms and conditions, the company wants to revise the terms and conditions of employment. Terms and conditions of employment are part of what we have in the Employment Act. What are we told? We are told to, that the company wants to review the terms 
But now what are some of the issues to be considered when the necessary particulars, or what are the necessary particulars to be considered if we are to achieve our objectives of revising these terms and conditions of employment. So give us five points, issues to be addressed. The, the employment. Sorry. I thought someone was speaking. So the, the employment act basically deals with a few things. It's one, it deals with issues of to do with determination. That's one. Two, it talks about issues to do with the redundancy salaries and wages, that's three. It also speaks of uh, sexual harassment, I think something like that. Someone can add something and then we deal with them. Anne, are you saying something? No, not sure. You don't know what terms and conditions of employment are? Oh, I thought you were asking me if I spoke. Uh, uh -huh. Contribute, now speak. <laughs> no, I don't, maybe, uh, probably start with what their contracts say. Are their contracts aligned with the And again, are there policies within the act? Let me ask. Are there policies probably are are out of the act? Yes. Do you have an employment contract? Yes. What are the issues in the in your employment contract? Uh, what capture of course is the position, the time for the person. If it is a management staff, we don't give short contracts. We give we employ on permanent basis. Then we capture the salary, yeah, basic plus house and house. We split it. We will capture if there is housing provided or not. Meals benefits. Then you go to the other part of the benefits, like the leave allowance benefits, pension benefits, uh, medical benefits. So then we airtime and such facilitation. And then we indicate that anything else that's not mentioned, uh, of course, the labor laws apply. But it's usually detailed. I mean, I've captured everything. Terms and conditions. You are joining us. Mm -hmm. This is your contract. What does the contract say? Other than your bio details. The contract will tell you we the give description. We give that separately. Oh, you give separately. We just indicate in the contract that you will be issued with a separate job description, which is discussed with the employee and the HOD. Okay, Pauline? I wanted to say working hours or reporting time and, and, and any breaks. Working hours, reporting time. Any breaks that you have, leave entitlements. Benefits that you will get. What are the terms? Is it contract? Is it permanent and pensionable? Your employment contract is done in line with the Employment Act. So as you read through your employment contract, you get to appreciate these issues, terms and conditions of employment. That is just what the examiner is asking about. Not Greek. 
but things you have your employment contract probably a copy is even in the house will give you the terms and conditions of employment because it is done in line with the employment act yes Pauline, you are something yes i wanted to ask does equal opportunity or uh, equity clause apply in such a document terms you 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 will not have in your terms and conditions basically we are saying for you to work for us you will be working under these terms you will be going on leave 30 days in a year we will be paying you a salary so much you will be accessing these benefits you will be expected for you to enjoy this we will be expecting you to come in monday to friday 8 to 5 We'll be expecting you to work even during weekends because working hours are regulated by the employer. So those are the terms and conditions under which the contract is signed. So we'll not say equal opportunities. The employer is obligated to ensure equal opportunities in terms of their practice of HR in the organization. But note that the employment contract will talk equal opportunity, unless they just say our organization is an equal opportunity employer and especially on matters to do with saying why. Question B, Benton. Termination of an employment contract can either be voluntary or involuntary. Discuss the various forms of termination that can take place in an organization. Voluntary or involuntary. Discuss the various forms of termination that can take place. Which forms of termination do you know? Retirement. Retirement. Actually, Windows. Resignation. Resignation. When an employee decides to voluntarily quit. Pauline? Sorry, Molly, I forgot to remove my, to, to lower my hand. Just a form of termination now that your hand is raised. Uh, upon retirement, retirement, achieving the retirement age. Uh -huh. When you attain the age. And Form of termination? When you restructure the company and you send some people away or they are sent away by the system. Restructuring, you may send some people away. Termination during probation, you may be terminated. Termination summary as a result of uh, summary dismissal. Medical backgrounds. Termination based on medical assessments. Death. He is sick and or uh, injured in a grievous accident and cannot continue in employment. We terminate you on medical grounds. Death. Death. When an employee unfortunately dies, that employment is terminated. Forms of when an employee, when an employee resigns. Sorry? When an employee resigns. Yes, resignation had been mentioned, but yes, is one of the forms. Notice that we've said voluntary and involuntary. So when you retire based on age involuntary, when you resign, maybe you've gotten 
greener pastures. Well done. Question four, no, three, A. Globally, an organi globally, organizations are embracing the concept of talent management to remain relevant and competitive. Analyze the role of human resource management in talent sourcing in an organization. Analyze the role of human resource management, manager, management in talent sourcing. So how did I describe talent last time? <laughs> how did I describe talent? I think so. Talent is just not any employee. The top, the best, the cream that you want to attract to join your organization. So globally, organizations are embracing the concept of talent management so as to remain relevant and competitive. You want to be able to manage the talent. You attract and then you manage them. They continue with you so as to build and grow and benefit from your having the talent in your organization. So analyze the role of the HR manager in talent sourcing in an organization. What is the role of HR manager in this broader pro pro project of talent sourcing? Acquisition of talent. What is your role as an HR manager? Anyone? Uh, can we say um, I will lead out employer brand branding policy or campaign a well laid, laid out employer branding branding what is that what yes. does that achieve to ensure that people view view the company as the employer of choice so that it attracts the right highly skilled Will to attract uh, talent, talent. Employees, employer branding is key that you want to be able to build the brand of your company so that everyone out there knows your company, identifies with and wants to join and work for your company as a bride employer of choice. Uh, other than employer branding, what else is your role as an HR person? We can say putting in place leadership development program like mentoring and coaching. Putting in place leadership development programs so that the talent has a reason to want to join because they know they will grow with your company. Next. You want to talk about attractive rewards and incentives that you are offering for the best to want to join your organization, you must promise them uh, an attractive rewards and incentive package that motivates them to want to join you and work with you. Talent, role of HR in talent, so, awesome. anything else? Ensuring there is good employee relations so that they also speak well of the uh, organization. Sorry, say that again. Good employee relations. So that they also speak well of the like they act as ambassadors for the organization. 
so that the employees themselves pride in being your ambassadors. They go out there and they are a brand ambassador. Where do you work? Oh, I work for Safaricom. Tayo Mevalia Green. You are proud of your employer. But when I ask, where do you work? Oh, I work for some company just in the industry area there. You are not proud of the employer. You cannot attract, such a company cannot attract talent. Talent wants to be associated with a leading brand in the market. So employer, employee branding is a strategy that you want to employ and embrace in terms of talent acquisition. Anything else? Anyone with another point? Um, can we talk about other programs like um, CSR, environment programs, in that, so that as an employee, you also feel there is a, it's not just about you working, also the other, other things matter. That you Talent are is keen on much work. more than just the routine eight to five job. So they want to participate in a lot more of the other activities that the company will roll out. So you want to be able to help in building and sustaining these activities to be able to attract talent to join your organization. You want to be able to come up with plans. Effective talent acquisition plans that you are able to attract the right talent. You are able to get the right sources of getting this talent so as to join your organization. So the folly many of you would have made in this question is just rush to the role of the HR in the organization, in recruitment, without looking at the, the examiner is focused on talent sourcing, not just recruitment of employees. Three B. Asante Kotoko Company Limited is currently facing challenges relating to high operational costs, making it difficult to compete effectively in the market. As a human resource manager, explain the measures that the company may take to control labor costs. Five of such measures. Faster, faster, we finish. Number one. Effective recruitment and selection. Qualify that. What I mean is having the right hire so that they they are well trained and have the specific skills to do the work to reduce the cost of getting them done. Some of the labor costs are what? Recruitment costs, training costs, safety and health costs, maintenance, generation costs, during separation. Because of course, 
So if you are asking for measures of improving labor costs, if you know the costs, then you can suggest measures of controlling these costs. Measures of controlling labor costs. Effective recruitment. So as you get the right people for the job, if the job calls for a diploma holder, don't get a person with a master's because they will come in and feel that job is beneath them. After a short while, they will leave you and you are forced to repeat the recruitment exercise again. Another method, Um, what about controlling overtime? Controlling? Overtime. Explain a bit. Um, so let's say um, most people, most employees end up doing overtime in the organization. So the fact that you have to pay them um, per hour for working extra. So, um, the best way to go about it is if anyone is working uh, overtime, there has to be a legit and justified reason for them having to work overtime, not just. So you need to pay on can... overtime. A such payment will affect your remuneration costs and in the process, labor costs. Pauline, your hand is raised. Yes, I wanted to, to say conduct a job analysis to avoid duplication of roles and responsibilities. Kongbali, but I want the measures of controlling labor costs. The five labor costs I've said, recruitment, training. What measures do you use to control training costs? Effective recruitment, you bring in people with the right qualifications and experience. So you don't need to incur a lot of money in training. When you bring in people with the right qualifications, they're able to work. You will reduce wastages. You will reduce costs of machinery breakdown. Employee uh, labor costs relating to safety. You need to provide the necessary machinery or uh, PPEs so that safety is assured. When safety is assured, then uh, Cost relating to accidents and injury at the workplace are eliminated or reduced. Labor costs will arise when there are strikes and disruptions. So to avoid that, maintain good employee relations so as to eliminate costs associated with strikes and disruptions. methods of controlling labor costs. We did this in topic one. We gave almost 10 points. You can make reference and you appreciate these methods. Question 4A, Fenton. Seasons matter to circle six to develop job descriptions for all workers. Discuss the various components that should be included in the job description. You want to develop a job description for all workers. So you are asked what are the components that should be included in the job description? What issues or what items rather are in your job description? Yes, one. What issues such as the job title. Issues such as the location from where the job holder will be operating. 
issues such as the duties and responsibilities that the job holder will perform, issues such as the job content, what does the job entail that the job holder will be doing? That from looking at the job description, you have a clear picture about the job and what the job is all about. So what are the contents of your job uh, description? Reporting relationships, to who do you report? To whom do you report as a job holder? What are the working conditions around which the job holder will operate? What are the job hazards? What are the machinery and equipment that the job holder uses? in executing their function. Components to be included in a job description. Is that clear? Yes. Bobby? Human resource planning is an important component in the management of human resources. Examine the application of the results of human resource planning in an organization. Into which areas do you apply the results obtained through human resource planning? Areas where you use the information obtained through human resource planning. How is human resource planning useful to the organization? In which areas? Yes? Make an attempt. It assists in recruitment process. Will assist in the recruitment process because you will be able to formulate a recruitment plan, a talent acquisition plan, so that you know how you are recruiting, when you are recruiting, who you are recruiting, etc. Next. Anybody else? What is the question again, Walim? Benton. Yes. Read question 4B. I am. Human resource planning is an important component in the management of human resources. Examine the application of the results of human resource planning in an organization. Into which areas will you apply, will you use the results obtained from human resource plan? Yes, Queen Ross? Uh, budget allocation. Budget allocation in terms of? Windows. Yes, maybe you can help me explain that point. <laughs> I could assist. Maybe I would say uh, budget allocation in terms of uh, human resources. So if you know how many people you need to engage over the next one year, then when you're budgeting, you make provisions of how much you will need to pay them for that period. Human resource planning is about coming up with a talent 
development plan. So it will help you formulate talent development plan through which you can develop and grow talent in the organization. Human resource planning will help you come up with uh, succession plans so that you know the employees in the organization who is there, who is about to leave, who is with us within what time period. Then you plan for their replacements, for their gradual replacements. areas to which you put information obtained through human resource plan from recruitment from budgeting training uh, also talked about development of talent promotion succession planning will rely on information from hr planning you cannot get it right if you've not planned for HR, mm. you will not be able to maybe even uh, ensure that the organization grows and expands their operations accordingly. You must set aside plans on these are the projected strategies for growth for the company and ask how will we actualize by bringing in the right manpower to take us there. Human resource plan. Question five, A. Fenton. Beautiful Flowers Limited has advertised various positions in all its branches with the aim of attracting qualified candidates to fill the vacant positions. Explain the various selection tools that the company should use in carrying out the exercise. I repeat again. Yeah. Be Beautiful Flowers Limited has advertised various positions in all its branches with the aim of attracting qualified candidates to fill the vacant positions. Explain the various selection tools that the company should use in carrying out the exercise. Selection tools. Hmm. Hmm. Tools. Which are the selection tools an organization can use? Selection tools. Today you guys are not with me. Yeah, this being the last session, I think is also just good. I think you're exhausted. Selection tools. Once the applications are received, you can have a preliminary interview to aid with <coughs> pre-selecting the candidates. Then you shortlist. Shortlisting is a critical selection tool. Then you plan for interviews, then you administer tests, then there is a medical and physical examination, there is reference checking, there is making a job offer after you've done all these stages. Preliminary interviews, shortlisting, interviewing, tests, medical examination, maybe you may employ some assessment centers, which may be individual or group assessment, medical examination and physical examination, background and reference checking, then you have your candidate. 5B, Fenton. A foreign contract of service is recognized under the Kenyan law, under the Kenyan labor laws. Analyze the circumstances 
analyze the circumstances under which a foreign contract of service is legally binding. Foreign contract of service. If you look at the Employment Act, is where we have the foreign contract of service. Foreign contract of service is, uh, this is intended, you have heard of these Kenyans who live to go and uh, work outside the country, then uh, they operate in almost slavery-like conditions. So to avoid, avoid that, there is a requirement in the Employment Act that uh, a foreign contract of service is entered into where at least the rights of these people will not be violated even when they go outside the country. So the examiner is asking, analyze the circumstances under which a foreign contract of service is legally, legally binding. The circumstances under which a foreign contract of service. This should be about part uh, 11 of the Employment Act. We are looking at if the form, if the contract is prepared using the designated form. If the contract is prepared using uh, and entered into where all the facts relevant are disclosed. If the contract is uh, not through coercion or intimidation, if the nature of the engagement is clear that uh, the employee will not be leaving maybe to get into slavery-like conditions, if the persons entered in, entering into the contract, you will have uh, submitted the bond that is required by the government just to make sure that you do not uh, fail to maybe pay the dues of this person or if you fail to pay, they can be compensated through the bond that you will have uh, submitted. The foreign contract of service will also require that the employee only does the job for which they entered into the contract not living here as a, uh, you're going to work as a housemaid, then when you go there, you are a slave, or you're going, normally they live, go to work as a hotel, an assistant in a hotel, a steward and all, but when you go there, you're going, you are find yourself as a house girl, your passport is confiscated, you are not paid, that is not, Desire. So the contract should be in the standard format, should be signed willingly with uh, no upside in the absence of coercion. The terms must be clear to the person when you are entering into the contract. Then uh, you want a situation where when you go out there, you only perform what was in the contract. You are not supposed to leave that you're going to work in a hotel, but when you get there, you become a house. Section 11 of the Employment Act, you will get a foreign contract of service and now the contract should be entered into. Six, Fenton. Preston Microfinance Limited recently conducted an employee evaluation exercise which revealed a decline in employees' performance over the last three years. As a result, the company intends to terminate employment contracts on account of poor performance. As a human resource manager, illustrate the procedure that the company should follow in terminating the contract. Really, please. Preston Microfinance Limited recently conducted an employee evaluation exercise, which revealed a decline in employees' performance over the last three years. As a result, the company intends to terminate employment contracts on account of poor performance. As a human resource manager, il illustrate the procedure that the company should follow in terminating the contracts. 
you want to terminate the employment contract. So what do you do when you want to terminate on grounds of poor performance? Yes, yeah, somebody? You want to terminate the contract. What do you do? There are many. These things you did in employment law. Procedure for terminating contract of employment. What do you do? Masi? Maureen, procedure for terminating employment contract. There must be there must be information put well together to justify this thing you're calling poor performance. How is it explained? What do you mean by poor performance? What explains poor performance? Yes. Now, you, the, for by the time you get to HR, it must, for it to get to HR before you touch the employee or before you speak to the employee, whoever is reporting. What is the person reporting as poor performance? And again, has the person been guided to do the job? For it to get there that you're calling it poor performance. Fenton? Walimu naskiza leo, hapa naskiza tu. Uh, <laughs> As Masi speaks, maybe what I can say that actually we are speaking of poor performance, eh? mm. not actual termination on another variables, but actual poor performance. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm listening. So you must I don't know, know if I'm right, Malum, I don't know if I'm right, but this is viewed as the most difficult uh, grounds of termination because you really have to justify poor performance, bearing in mind that the employee can also give back his feedback, which may be factual and true. That is why it is you as HR manager to give us the reasons how you will go about doing it. So there has to be valid reasons as to why the, what shows that indeed the performances of the employee has been poor over the time. You must have proof, proof of poor performance, maybe performance appraisal over time, results of appraisal over time, and just inability of the employee to meet their targets expected of them. Lou, so you want to talk about what measures you've taken just to guide the employee, put them on some performance improvement plan, cancel them on how to improve performance. You must show proof, demonstrate proof that that has been done. You must demonstrate proof how uh, the poor performance is impacting on operations of the company and you cannot continue with such any longer. You must have show proof that you gave this employee notice and you served warning, a warning letter was issued 
maybe another warning letter. And because the performance continues, then you are left with no recourse but to terminate. You gave notice, you pay any dues, any outstanding leave, just so that the employee will not run to court and even if they run to court, you will be found to have followed fair procedure. So that we'll consider what procedure did you adopt? How did you communicate the decision to the employee? Adhere to abide by all the statutory requirements with respect to give them or issue the certificate of service, for example, pay them any outstanding dues, notify the labor office, just make sure everything is done in a manner that is above board. There are warning letters, you must have warning letters, have them in the file. You can prove that you did everything in a manner that was above board. B, one of the challenges facing modern organizations is search for talent. Examine the trends in talent sourcing. There's a clip I had uploaded on the trends in talent sourcing. Did you bother to check what the clip was about? Are you sure you did that with us or with the other class? You are on the platform. <laughs> it's only the you for your class and for the other class that normally change. You check the platform. Trends in talent management, talent acquisition, 2020. Just reread the question. One of the challenges facing modern organizations is search for talent. Examine the trends in talent sourcing. Trends in talent sourcing. We say talent top cream, the best in your area. So what are the trends that organizations employ, encounter, face in talent sourcing? Anybody to try? I think the very most common one is uh, headhunting and or poaching or either of them. You poach from uh, the, best, the best people or people who have made turnarounds in organizations. You headhunt, you poach, you go for people with a solid reputation Rather than, or you want to place advertisements, you want to sort, receive. By the time you get somebody, but is nothing when it comes to the workplace. Next. What are, what other trend can you talk about? We live in a, a world where artificial intelligence is uh, the in thing. So that organizations are relying on artificial intelligence, on data to be able to analyze and get the best talent that will come in and transform and help change our organizations going forward. In talent, we are looking at 
the talent that you seek in many uh, circumstances are now not people who are looking at uh, eight to five, Monday to Friday, permanent and pensionable like jobs. A lot of flexibility is desired by this top talent that they want you to give them maybe how many hours they come during the week, they work, remote working from wherever, so long as the targets are met, that they have all the freedom to do other things. Trends in talent management, talent sourcing in the 21st century. We talk about data-driven recruitment where you just don't recruit because you, you want to fill positions, but you recruit because you, you've analyzed data. This person, they are, I wish you could, uh, if you are a football lover and you go and analyze how a club will, for example, analyze a player before they hire them. They get to know the player, everything, every perspective about the player relating to performance or their ability that by the time they are concluding, this is our man, they can't go wrong. His speed, how fast he runs, how slow, how he slows down, his heartbeat, all this data is captured, then used to make a decision. So the modern organization are looking at adopting the same when it comes to bringing in talent. Any other thing you might want to talk about? Can we all? Sorry? We had mentioned the issue of the employer brand. Talent is keen on the employer brand. So organizations are keen on building and enhancing and sustaining this brand because it's important, it's integral for purposes of uh, recruiting talent into the organization. Anything else you might want to include? What outsourcing? Look at their culture. That you want to change and reorient your culture and make it friendly, make the work environment friendly and conducive so that talent is just attracted to want to live and work there. There was an article I read some while back about the workplace at Google Africa. So it's relaxed. They even have beds. If you want to go and relax and sleep, it's okay. You can go to work and uh, you don't have to put on a suit as some of us Monday to Friday. Relaxed environment. You want to, nobody follows you. So long as you meet your targets at the end of the period. <clears throat> Flexibility in terms of working time, in terms of all that. Work environment and changing the culture of your organization. Anything else? So that is it for that paper. A uh, good number of the questions are things you lift expressly from the notes, but others are things that you need to apply knowledge and uh, uh, other read from uh, other readings from outside the notes. So with that, we come to the end of uh, this paper. Uh, I want to believe that in a small way, it was useful in just highlighting one or two things of fo areas of focus you need to concentrate on even as you look at the employee resourcing paper for June 2018. So as you revise, make reference to these and uh, can help you maybe 
remember one or two areas for purposes of uh, preparation for your exam in the next uh, two weeks or so.